Hey there friends, I have a couple new starter journals to go in the shop. Um, if you are keeping up with this little starter journal series, a starter journal is a journal that is for folks who don't know if they gravitate to a starter uh, flow journal or not. Um, they're, they're priced at a price point that is a little easier for you guys to make the decision about, about journals like this. These types of journals are great um, collector's journals. If you if you want to, you can uh, open the journal. You can take out everything that's in here, and you're going to have a handmade book already bound, already with a closure, um, ready for your very own collection of whatever you want. Um, they make a great gift, especially for someone who, you know, is graduating or going off to college. This is a fiddly closure. I love it. It's a little fiddly. <laughs> it has a, a rhinestone closure on it. These are, um, these are oriental type of journals. This one has kimonos on it and this one has fans. When I was in Italy we saw a lot of costume shops that were featuring fans. Of course, um, you know, Venice being right on the water, I'm sure it was hot and balmy when you know, when uh, the summer hit and there was no air conditioning. Thus, those beautiful windows, I guess, were flung open to let the ocean breeze in. Let me show you these journals, guys. And since we've already talked about the fiddly closure here, we'll, st we'll start with fans. I think she's so pretty. She just has different kinds of fans on her. A little bit of text is also on the fabric. I finished her off with wood beads and some engraved um, Japanese beads so you can see the can you see the engraving on the beads it's a wee bit hard to see hang on just a second collar hole please there we go now you can see it right they're really pretty um, and I do like wood beads I think they're they're earthy and authentic and cool all right fiddly closure here I've already made that I've already made that clear to y'all. Fiddly <laughs> closure. But it's really pretty as a rhinestone. And I really, really liked it and thought it went with the book really well. So let's see what we got in here. These are some elements that I created from a magazine. I had a magazine last night. I was pretty tuckered out and was watching Andy Griffith. And while I watched Andy Griffith, I put together... Some little oversized ATCs for you guys to play with. I had such fun doing it that I think I'm going to do it when I watch Andy Griffith tonight. My day, I usually, I'm up around 6. I'm working by 6.30. And at 8 o'clock, I stop and I watch Andy Griffith because I love it. And one of my favorite episodes was on last night. It was the one with Aunt B and the pickles uh, that tasted like kerosene. <laughs> It's so funny. Okay, a little bit of inspiration for you. Uh, we have the color gold. Now, I have not been online to see about taking that color, uh, that color um, survey, you know, to see what color I am. I have so enjoyed this ribbon book. Um, I think it was a lot of fun to look at wrapping and tying techniques. We've got uh, some inspiration from scrapbooking magazines here for you. I love these images. And even, you know, even if you just use a small corner of something, it, it just is very striking. They're absolutely lovely images. This is an article about recycling magazines, which I'm, I really do love to do that. Um, this is my business card to inspire you to make your own. And I've got a pocket of elements for you to play with right here. Some fabric scraps, painty paper, sprayed papers. I think there are even some resist elements in here, too. Those are fun to play with. Tickets, because I kind of had a Seven Gypsies binge uh, the other night when I realized that I had a gift certificate that I had not spent yet. And it was like, whoa. So, yay for y'all. <laughs> and yay for me. It was fun. This is a Seven Gypsies uh, tag right here. I love those things. 
Uh, our old ephemera from the Nielsen's A Christmas Card. I love this Jap these Japanese characters. Poetry for you guys. Pretty papers. This is an article about uh, garments, and I I don't know what year this is, but you can kind of tell by the style of dress. I would say 1920s, maybe. Very pretty. Three Musketeers for you guys. That dates from 1876. A bit of Alice in Wonderland. Some Emily Dickinson poetry. I really do like this book because it notes the date, you know, when she wrote the poem. Emily Dickinson. Tam and Laura Jordan signed the greeting card, so we have salvage script for you. More things to play with. I, I kind of loved this one. This is one of those things like, oh, am I going to put it in a flow journal? I'm going to keep it for myself. This, was, this magazine was so pretty, and it's been like one of those things that's hard to cut up. But I think that, um, I think when you have something beautiful like that, that you should use it. You shouldn't just leave it lying about. Um, it is eye candy. This is a billy goat. Isn't he cute? We have a little bit of home and garden for you right here. I kind of dug these illustrations. This was from the November 1984 uh, garden, Gourmet Garden Cookbook. Uh, and it talks about tools. And I love the illustrations. I thought they were super neat. I know that you guys can color them and then take them apart and make something beautiful out of them. This is the 1988 um, Colonial Living Magazine, I do believe. Might have that wrong. Um, look at that garden. That just looks to me like this beautiful English garden. So pretty. Got some stickers for you that say thank you and harvest. Uh, this is a little pocket of things for you to play with. And then you can alter the little pocket as well. It's a tiny little envelope. I thought it was really fun. Um, more tasting notes for you right here. This is the cover of a gourmet garden from 1984. This is from the 1948 Metropolitan Life Cookbook, which was just really, really neat. These, um, these, these books are dated 1955, 19... 51, 1953, and I'm not, it's 50s ephemera, you guys. Uh, you can tell by the illustrations. I love this illustration here because it is a grandma and her little daughter, and they are shelling peas. That's one of my strongest, earliest childhood memories is watching my grandma and my mama shell peas or snap beans outside on the glider. You know, you had these metal gliders in the south that you would position under a shade tree, and that's where you might... You know, you might uh, shell your peas or snap your beans or, you know, peel your potatoes. This is very sweet. Uh, good memory. Um, I'm, of course, I love Snoopy because my first toy when I was born was a Snoopy wind-up doll that I still have. He walks. He's so cool. Uh, vintage playing cards for you. This is a little bit of a texture element that was a Take 5 Art Challenge. I love those Take 5 Art Challenges, y'all. Do that. It's just five things. Um, it's hashtag Take the Number 5 Art take five art and it is really fun a piece of fabric for you that features butterflies um, because we had our our uh, patterns that were cl was clothing for dogs I thought that would be appropriate and <laughs> the Dalmatian and he says woof up there now the F is cut off because this is a scrap piece of uh, fabric and we have fabric paper for you, more fabric scraps to play with, pretty, pretty papers. This is gleaned from an old calendar. I love the colors there. I love the pinks and the yellows together. And the final pocket also has some fun paper to play with. Okay, we've, we've talked about the fiddly closure, okay? It's a fiddly closure. This is Kimona, and I love Kimona. I think that the gold 
popping out from the kimonos. It's absolutely beautiful. Finished off really simply with the wood beads and the uh, Japanese engraved beads. I think those are sweet. And it does have a an I Ching coin that is the closure for this one as well. If you aren't familiar with the I Ching, it's a... Um, it's a Chinese um, fortune telling. You know, I, I guess for lack of a better word, it's Chinese fortune telling that involves uh, I Ching coins and you, you um, like toss them like dice and then the, um, the, the numbers that are coming up on the coins correspond with the I Ching. It's very, very interesting if, if you're interested in things like feng shui or Chinese you know, Chinese uh, mythology or anything like that. You might want to look up the I Ching. Super interesting. Another one of the little cards that I made last night. I was just having so much fun making those. I've got a skinny book and some glittery... Um, some glittery ribbon right here for you. This is my favorite ribbon, and that is the last piece of it. Some inspirational papers. I love the pointy hand up here. This reminds me of my little fella. It was like about the time of um, Back to the Future. Oh my gosh, he loved that movie. He thought he was Marty McFly. Uh, our color here is gold. More of the DIY ribbon and packages. It's just fascinating, isn't it? This is about how to make a flat bow. Really beautiful. Lots of fun papers for you to play with. And remember these papers, you can make cards for people. You can make ATCs. You can make bookmarks. You can do whatever you want with these papers. A pretty little Seven Gypsies ticket. Hey, diddle, diddle, baby bunting. Uh, a little book for you right here. This is not a sewn book, but it will encourage you to make your own book. It even has the paper inside here. So uh, check out my um, mini book tutorial, and it will show you exactly how to bind that. Sincerely and dear. I thought those were two good words to use with our beautiful text pages that we have here. Uh, I think we have some German text, French text. This is um, this is English text, but I don't remember what book this is from. It's quite beautiful and old. Um, Three Musketeers was 1876. Nielsen Ephemera, Kathy and Skipper signed this card. Um, another one of the cards that I made last night. Like I said, I was really having a blast making those cards. Going to do the same thing tonight. Uh, a giraffe. I love giraffes. And this is a numbered like index card for you. Um, Cherish and family are our stickers. Have some Tim Holtz vellum paper here for you. Some beautiful sparkly paper back here. This is our home and garden element. I I love these like 1988, 1980s. This is April 1997. Look at that tap. My sister's tap at her house. You wave your hand under it and it starts. And you wave your hand under it and it stops. It's very mystical. It's very magical. <laughs> it's super cool. It's fun to just play with it. Don't tell her I was playing with the tap. Lots of sweet images from magazines. I always like to look at these magazines and think, you know, what, what do I gravitate to? What are colors that I gravitate to? What are patterns that I gravitate to? What are the, um, you know, design elements that I really do like? I think it's good to hone your preferences. Um, don't make honing your preferences make you miserable. Like, oh, I'm never going to get that bed, or I'm never going to get that house that looks like that. Make honing your principles good. You know, stock those things up and, and feel that feeling of having the, the colors and the textures and the design that you want. Just have, have that good, good feeling, and you will start to see changes, and you'll start to, like, manifest some cool stuff in your life. Um... Or that's my thought. We've got some ABCs for you to play with. More of those cool Kathy Kale um, 
uh, little, what do you call that? It's a, hold on, I'll get it. It's a tag. There we go. <laughs> Have I told you my yard's flooding? <laughs> Yeah, I'll put some pictures in here for you so you can see that. Oh my goodness. It's kind of been on my mind the past couple days. And I keep looking outside to see if it's going to rain anymore. This is a 1953, 1954 um, uh, cooking recipes. This is from the Metropolitan Life Cookbook. This one is dated 1948. Creamy omelet, scalloped eggs and ham, mustard pickles. Hmm. Not like Aunt B's pickles, I bet. Uh, tasting notes for you, just in case you want some wine with those um, pickles or your French omelet or your stuffed eggs. When I was in Italy, I kind of fell in love with Prosecco, you guys, and I really kind of fell in love with it. I was at Lidl the other day, and I did find Prosecco. I was like, oh my goodness, there's a bottle of Prosecco. But I really needed to get dog food. And you know I love my doggies when I don't get the bottle of Prosecco, and I get the dog food. But it was fun to find it. And it was like, hmm, I'm going to have to, like, mm, save me up a little bit of cashola and get a bottle of that makes me remember my sister and our, our beautiful trip and how much fun we had. These are more beautiful papers. Umbrella Guy, a whole ticket. More of the uh, pattern ephemera. And I'm kind of running out of that. I love this new bead book. I'm, I'm thinking this is about 1910. It is absolutely incredible we're really 1984 right here with the simplicity pattern because they've got padded shoulders remember when we used to wear padded shoulders good gracious uh, some fabric for you this time it features really pretty sparkly butterflies and more butterfly fabric for you along with some peonies my peonies did not last very long, friends. They um, they got pretty smattered. We've had over ten and a half inches of rain here in, in the month of May. This is more rain than we've ever had. This is historic, epic rain that we've had. It has been. Um, you just get to the point where you just don't want it to rain anymore, <laughs> but it does. So there's that. Uh, numbers for you guys to play with. I like these little word cards that say you and me. So I know you can do something sweet with that. I will have these two starter journals in the shop just a little later on this afternoon. It is Wednesday, so do look for those sometimes Wednesday afternoon or early evening. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting my Etsy shop. I really cannot say thank you enough for your kindness, your support at YouTube, uh, support at the Etsy shop. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a positive comment. And I appreciate each and every one of you for listening to me yammer on and on and on and on. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you. Bye.